don't say you know me If you won't show me the way In which you do I'm Dominic Di Tommaso, I'm 23 years old and I do parkour and free running. Hi, I'm Natasia Hurt, I'm 21 years old and I surf. Dana Sherpa, I'm 24 and I'm a skier. Tom Borman, 30 years old and BMX is my sport, I guess. I first started when I was about two or three. I uh, actually can't remember, I've pretty much been doing it my entire life. Uh, but before that, I was told that my dad skied around with me in his backpack, so I guess since as young as I can remember. <laughs> because I grew up in Byron Bay, around the beach, so I was at the beach every weekend with my brother, mum and dad down in the water. I didn't fully get into surfing until I was about 14 and then I started training. I started to do competitions and I'd surf to get out of swimming training. And instead of swimming carnivals, I'd want to do surfing competitions. What drew me to parkour and free running was that there's this freedom about it that you can just do what you want. You just go outside, you have fun with your friends. And uh, I came from a lot of organized sport where there was very strict training and very hard work every day. You got organized this, organized that. With free running, you can just go out and have fun and just play. The first time I kind of took parkour seriously was uh, about a year and a half ago when I first traveled overseas. I went over just to have fun and explore and a lot of people kind of told me that there was more of an opportunity there than I was pushing myself for. Serious probably wouldn't be the right word for me, I guess, like it's probably more about fun than anything, but I guess wanting to pursue it was probably when I first started riding park and doing tricks. Um, I remember doing like my first 180 when I was probably like 14 and after that I was just like, yeah, like this is the shit, like this is what I want to do, this is the coolest thing ever. If it was school holidays, I'd spend about nine hours a day training. We'd go out in the morning and wouldn't come home till dark and spend the whole time jumping around, climbing different things and just exploring. I've been training for nine years now and I feel that the only time that I felt that I could really make it was last year, so approximately eight years into training. It's kind of like you're always trying to, to make it. Like even now I feel like I'm just trying to like maintain, like you're never at a stage where you sort of happy with, with where you are, you always kind of want more and more. But um, probably after I first got hooked up and it kind of became a bit more viable and I realised I could actually do it, um, would be the sort of the turning point. Sponsorship to me in the early days wasn't even a notation in my mind. It was like, oh, you know, we could get uh, gear for doing this or we could get uh, some shirts for doing this, but I was still just doing it because I wanted to do it. It was, it was just basically free gear. Um, I actually ended up buying, I think my first setup, I had like a pro deal, so like 40% off the cost of the, the of retail. And basically yeah, you start buying your gear and then you do that for a couple of years. And then after that, sponsors kind of, they get that you're interested in the gear and then they kind of just fully hook you up. I always maintain the thought that you don't need to be sponsored to be a good skier because lots of my friends were kind of getting sponsored and it was sort of the thing at the time. And I still maintain that thought now but I more think along the lines of you can be a better skier if you are sponsored. They give you the opportunity to, to do it. Um, I guess they, you know, they invest like time and money in you and a belief that you can, you can achieve something. I haven't really ever got money unless you win a competition or something like that. It's pretty much just getting free stuff like surfboards, grips, leg ropes, wetsuits, swimmers. I was never really one to write to a company and like send them a video of myself, which is what my surf coach wanted me to do when he made my videos, but I never really wanted to do it. But it was pretty much just like through surfing and seeing people out in the surf and stuff like that. I guess injuries are always a, a frustrating setback in terms of you just gotta have time off 
and when you can't ride your bike you kind of I don't know for me it always feels like you've lost a little part of yourself and when all your friendships and a lot of the people in your life come from that side of things come from BMX riding is the most important thing so you're hanging out with them but they, they're going riding and you can't because you're injured I guess that's that's a pretty frustrating part. Some of the major injuries I've experienced have been hyperflexion and dorsiflexion of the ankle and of the wrists. Um, another injury I did receive was when I uh, put my shoulder out, I ruptured the muscles in my chest and in my back behind under my shoulder and it forced my clavicle up which gave me about a month and a half of recovery time. I've hit the reef a few times and I've almost drowned once before and it was a, I think it was a couple of years ago I went up and did a turn and I tore the ligaments in my knee. I've dislocated my hip, tore tendons off the bone there, um, I've had a shoulder reconstruction and a bone graft on each shoulder, um, broke both my thumbs I think twice over each, um, tore both my meniscuses, yeah it's um, it's never ending really. When I was 16, broke my elbow really badly and it was a compound wire fracture they called it, so the bone was sticking out. Well, I didn't see it though, it just poked through my skin and poked through my hoodie and poked back in. And it was basically shattered my elbow completely. So there's um, 22 bits of metal hold that one together. So two plates, a bunch of long big screws and a lot of pins and some wire holding muscle in place. Uh, more recently, uh, five years ago I had a Injury at five docks, so I fractured my skull in seven places and my spine, my T6 vertebrae. No, no surgery needed, which was cool, but it was just a little bit of bruising on my brain and that sort of stuff, so I had to really take it easy for about a year. And that was a little bit hard to get my head around, I guess. Like, I was wearing a helmet, hit my head, still broke my skull, you know, so the whole what if thing did, did creep into my mind, I guess, about, um, if I wasn't wearing a helmet, would I be dead? Would I be a vegetable? Would I have permanent brain injury? It's hard, like injuries can, you know, just rob you of your confidence and they can, you know, they're heartbreaking really. Um, they can be really upsetting if you kind of let them upset you. Especially because skiing, it's like, you're so young when you do it. So like growing up, you know, being like, you know, 15 to where I'm at now, 24, most normal people don't go through injuries like, you know year after year and just constantly get beaten up like it's not a normal thing and it kind of weighs down on you sometimes and definitely builds up and you think like no nah, fuck this i'm out like i don't want to be a part of it but yeah i don't know i guess it's just an addictive thing you just gotta tell yourself it's just a speed bump and kind of move on get going forward when i'm going into something new or something that i've my perceive as scary. Uh, I try to refer back to some of the sports that I did when I was younger, which taught me a lot about, you know, self-motivation and talking yourself through, making sure that you are going at it with 100% commitment and 100% focus. So I do a lot of self-motivation, uh, like you've got this, you can do this, that sort of thing. Uh, make sure that I am ready for it and then commit myself 100%. Pretty much everything I do skiing, it's like there's that voice in my head being like, this is a bad idea. And it's funny because it never gets any easier after all these years, it just gets harder really. But I tell myself that anxiety and fear is like a really good thing to have because basically it's like a sort of a prehistoric instinct you have that heightens your senses, makes you more aware, quickens your reflexes. You're in survival mode basically, like there's no better time to be trying something new, I guess. So you kind of just really have to embrace the fear and all the anxiety and everything that comes with it. And you're just in that kind of silent state. I guess that's what the zone is, like you're in the zone and you're just kind of not really focused on anything. It's like an extension of yourself in terms of like expression and I don't know, for me, I mean, I'm a placid, non-violent, non-confrontational person, but I feel like when I'm riding, I, I can be really aggressive and it's just an outlet. 
I believe that most action sports do breed creativity because you're out there and you're doing something that doesn't have these strict guidelines, you're doing something that not necessarily has been done before, and so you're free to do it in the way you want to do. And something that is recognised, especially in free running, is creativity and difference. So it definitely breeds people to want to achieve that. The best part about surfing is probably being in the water, especially on a crystal clear day with your friends, having fun, <laughs> yeah. being in the sun, going on holidays. I've been to Europe, I did like uh, France and Spain and the UK and I've been to New Zealand and also to North America. I've mostly been to the States and Canada, that's where I'd kind of go during the summer. Um, Breckenridge and Keystone in Colorado, Whistler's awesome, Mammoth in California. I went to Sweden for the Unolson Super Sessions. Japan, it just snows and snows and snows. I was there for, I think, eight weeks and I saw the sun twice. Like, it's just absolutely nuts. My favourite place to go skiing is probably actually here, probably at Perisher. Um, this time of year, really, in spring. Like, all your mates are about, the snow's nice and soft, it's sunny, everyone's drinking beers on the deck. It's just like the perfect place, like out of all the places in the world, like Perisher for sure. That's just the best thing I've ever done. I mean, it's given me so much fun and it continues to be fun. It hasn't gotten old yet. I want to ski till like the day I die. There's nothing really else like it. Like it's not really comparable to anything else I've ever done before. It's just, yeah, it's just that feeling of pure ecstasy. It's, it's just the best feeling ever.